Uh, I thought I'd read a little bit more from Simple Self Healing today, which again is a book I did uh, back in 2017, I believe, about Emil Kuei's approach to healing, to manifesting, to improving your life. Um, something that I think we really have to remind ourselves again and again and again uh, is this role of the imagination is far greater than um, society or culture gives it credit for and far greater, frankly, than we give it credit for most of the time because we are part of culture and society. We are what we are, what we've been taught. And what we've been taught about the imagination is that it's, you know, this strong, influential thing, but um, there's other factors, including willpower and having mental fortitude that are far stronger and, and you know, are, are what, you know, compels your life. What Kuwait is saying, what we have to remind ourselves of again and again, is no. <laughs> Imagination is what's doing it. What you're thinking, you know, constantly and repetitively thinking, like your main thought patterns, your main belief patterns, that's imagination. That's not willpower. And the idea is to have your willpower aligned with your imagination. But, you know, we're going to read a short excerpt today that you've heard before. I think I've read it before even on in one of these car videos or made a podcast episode about these quotes. But you have to understand that we don't appreciate how overwhelmingly powerful our imagination is. And, you know, what I really like to hit upon when we talk about Kuwait, when we talk about thinking imaginatively is that we're thinking no matter what. We're thinking no matter what. And we have, in my opinion, Kuwait would say the same thing, Kuwait's opinion as well. We have one conscious thought at a time. And the conscious thoughts that we have are shaped by our imagination, or by our subconscious, which, he, you know, Kuwait used subconscious and imagination synonymously for practical purposes. What we've imagined and believed in the past shapes our conscious thinking, but we can reshape our imagination by changing our conscious thinking, consciously thinking better things. This is the power of when you don't believe something and you can't get behind a technique, like you can't get behind feeling as if, because you don't feel as if, for instance, you know, you don't feel the power of a positive statement. It feels false to you. This is the power when all these more, uh, you know, one could say, I don't want to say traditional, but like normal manifesting techniques don't work for you. This is the power of recognizing that you can only think one thing at once. So you can literally think to yourself or say out loud the thought you can be having because you can only have one thought at once can be a positive thought. You can create a positive thought that you loop and keep on saying over and over and over again. Is it the sexiest of techniques? No. Is it my favorite technique? Absolutely freaking not. You know, I like to tell people, I sometimes tell clients, like, I don't, I personally don't like affirmations that much. <laughs> but they, they do work when most other things seem to fail, you know, um, especially when it comes to like shifting how we feel about a specific external thing we want to change, such as like our relationship, our health, our financial situation. If you just hammer something home because you can only think one thought at once, uh, it shifts things. And that's, you know, that's part of what Kuwait is saying, and it's important. And again, it's why I mentioned someone like Sammy Ingram on this channel, because what she's saying is true about repetition in that way. And Kuwait talks about repetition all the time. 
Now, do you have to repeat a phrase over and over and over again? No, you don't. Once you imaginatively start getting behind what you're saying, behind a positive belief, you actually start to think that this is happening. You actually do begin to feel as if you have what you desire in some significant way. When you have that going for you, it's much easier to use more, I guess we're using the word traditional uh, manifesting techniques to feel it more and more in your life. But when you don't feel it, because you can only think one thing at once, you can shift how you think about something by repeating a phrase. An assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. That's what Neville said, and he was damn right about that. And that's what we're doing here in a very practical, concrete form when we're saying something over and over and over again. If you're familiar with this channel in Kuwait, you've heard this a hundred times, but we need to hear it a hundred times. We need to hear it a thousand times. Just like we need to hear positive affirmations over and over and over and over and over again. Because we've programmed ourselves because of culture. The culture didn't program us. We programmed ourselves via culture. We self-suggested to ourselves all these relatively negative beliefs and thought patterns. And now we're trying to replace them with more positive ones. But right now, in this moment, you can't have both at the same time. There's only one thing going through your head. And we can, to give, you know, it's not really like this. Everything's much more gray. But you, you can either be thinking a good thought or a bad thought. Okay? Now, it's not that simple usually, right? In terms of good thought, bad thought. It's not like there's really a bad thought or a good thought. But there is a good positive suggestion you could be making. Or there is a negative suggestion you could be making. And too often we make negative suggestions. We imagine negatively. Again, that is what culture taught us to do and we, most of us were good students and we suggest negatively far more than we, we, we would like to ourselves. Um, so I'm just going to read a couple sentences from, from this chapter in Simple Self-Healing. Okay. Um, this chapter is just called The Role of, of the Imagination. And again, at the beginning of the chapter, there's the Kuei quote, the key to my method is to know that the imagination is superior to the will. Okay. Again, if you don't see shades of Neville or like the incredible influence the Kuwe had on Neville's teachings and the Kuwe had on so many people's teachings that came after him, um, it, it's pretty clear if you look at quotes like that. Kuwait says here, I must speak of the all-important role of the imagination, specifically of the dominance of the imagination over the will. Contrary to the generally accepted theory, the will isn't the invincible force it's claimed to be. In fact, whenever imagination and will come into conflict, it is always imagination that triumphs. This is what we were just talking about. Try to do something while repeating, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't do it, I can't, I can't, I can't. You'll quickly see this truth confirmed for you. The mere idea of inability to accomplish a thing paralyzes the willpower. I made a video, I'll link above, you know, of Kuei going through his, um, you know, the, the different exercises he, ha he would have people do when he, they visited his clinic to prove this point. Very insightful to hear these exercises and then to try them out yourself. You'll see what Kuwe is talking about here. If you really think you can't do something, like you can't open your hands and you say, I think I can't do it, I can't do it, and you have your hands clasped together, you'll be unable to open them. If I say open them and you're thinking to yourself, I can't open them, you have them clasped together, you won't be able to open them. And then if I go open them and you think you can, you'll open them. That's what Kuwe says. Self-mastery, therefore, is attained when the imagination has been directed and trained to conform with our desires. For although in one sense the imagination is disposed to the subconscious, it really dominates the latter. And again, this is just wording here. He uses imagination and subconscious synonymously a lot of the time. Self-mastery is a term that I don't really love, you know, but I like it when Kuwait uses it because he... Um, 
you know, we, he practically means something by using that term. And if we know how to guide it, our subconscious self will take charge of our material being and do its work just as we wish it to be done. In other words, exactly in conformity with our conscious suggestions. AKA, if we know how to guide our imagination, it will take care of things for us and we can guide it by suggesting more and more positive things to ourselves. That's how we guide it. What we're suggesting to ourselves is what is going to end up happening in our lives in some significant way. Um, you know, again, this is a good quote. I'm just going to end this here. I've said this before, read this quote before. Kuwait says, analyze the so-called strong-willed characters of history. He says like Caesar, Napoleon, etc. You know, the, the very, very famous people. Quay says, you'll find that they were all men of big imagination. Certain ideas were implanted in their minds and their tenacious suggestions impelled them into action. In other words, it wasn't their willpower as much as it was their imagination. These guys had strong willpower, but they also had an imagination that was aligned with their willpower. You can have a very strong willpower, but if your imagination is saying you're not going to do something, you're, you're not going to accomplish what you want. A lot here. And at the same time, it's, it's really simple. Um, questions, let me know. If you want coaching or help with this, RadicalCounselor.com. And if you have not checked out Kue, I would look at Simple Self-Healing and start to understand these practical rational aspects about manifesting that are too often ignored on YouTube. Until next time, enjoy.